data on a drive on this 2.5 uh, swap Mazda 3 um, running 2.3 injectors. I'm going to show you why you can do that. You're not going to, you shouldn't have any problems. And you see here, um, the log just started. We're just going to slide this this way and keep it going. Keep an eye on your long term and short term fuel trims. Let me slow this down a little bit. I'm backwards now, too slow. Here we go. You can see very rarely does it go over 10%, only when I'm under slight to heavy throttle, medium to heavy throttle. Cruising and other times it does pretty well. Um, well long term fuel trim right here, and short term fuel trim here. Now, short term is going to be immediate long term is an average over a length of period of time and you have different cells um, so these sharp drops are different throttles normally that you'll see um, like if I went full throttle or maybe 75 throttle you'll see it change and jump up and then as soon as I get off of that you'll see it go back to a different cell um, those are immediate changes in the average it's got different s sets of them um, short term is fuel added immediately um, so if you watch the oxygen sensor and the short term they would act together as uh, the direct feedback from the oxygen sensor feeds the short term fuel trim for the ECU to adjust. Um, as you can see here rarely do we get up close to 20 percent on the short term and rarely do we go over 10 on the long term. Mostly in cruising you can see it's maybe six to zero percent. Um, let's see we got a spike right around here. See if we can pull that spike up. You can see right here, 16.4 in the long term. It jumped up because I gave it extra throttle. Um, it's already adjusted for it. As you can see, short term is near zero. So you're not maxing out your injectors. It had to add an extra 16%, yes. But it is completely controllable. As you can see, it's trying to pull a negative... 1.4 percent away from it so we're still in a good uh, air fuel range here that it needs um, you're by no means maxing out the 2.3 injectors uh, at any point in this have I seen that um, there's a couple points where you'll see that f short term gets high but that's only because it's right before the long term fuel trim cell gets picked up um, there's a little point of throttle right there between that uh, right before it gets to this 16.4 part that's not accounted for uh, on the short term side you see that little spike right there but see as for the most part it stays pretty good and um, I don't think at any point in time did I ever see, that's the end of the trip there, did I ever see it get over uh, 30%. Um, you see these spikes here, just me using a throttle uh, coming in, um, just tapping it to change it. But uh, the reason why you don't want to use the 2.5 injectors is I assume probably at the heavy to wide open throttle areas, you'll either run, you might not get into the 20% positive range, you either run probably closer to zero or, you know, possibly even negative. It might run too rich because you need to realize that the computer still thinks that you have 2.3 injectors in there if you don't have a tune. Um, so it's programmed for that 2.3 injector size and latency tables and when you throw a bigger injector in there, the computer has no way of knowing that those injectors are in there. So you'll get 
probably not too bad around idle it probably run a little bit rich and then further up in the band uh, probably in cruising it'll probably be running kind of rich as you can see the 2.3s were pretty fairly nominal around you know maybe six percent in some places it was even pretty close to zero um, you know anything under ten percent is usually considered normal you know it could be altitude differences that would change that you know if I went from here to Florida you know dropped 800 feet then you know obviously the oxygen content is going to be richer and it'll reflect in the fuel trims if I went to maybe a plateau in Utah that's 4,000 feet up in the freaking you know above sea level then you know the air is going to be a lot thinner and you'll that'll also reflect in the fuel trims so plus or minus 10 percent it's really not a big deal and for the most part except on the heavy loads um, the 2.3 injectors did just fine um, even great uh, as far as fuel trims go so they work good for the engine um, they don't max out under full throttle uh, when they build these engines and these cars they don't you know put injectors in there that are just barely big enough that maxes them out so even though you do have a little bit bigger motor as you can see it popped in 16 and 20 percent very rarely 20 percent usually 16 percent under the the heavy the wide open throttle areas um, and it accounted for it as you can see the short term always when it switched to that 16 20 percent short term was always around zero or so or maybe even negative so it is accounting for it and it's not running out of injectors um, if you were running out of injectors you would see long term up higher wherever the max out point is sometimes they max out at 50 percent some cars max out at 25 some of them max out in the 30 range um, but you would see long term max out and then as well as the maxed out long term you would see short term maxed out or you would see short term maxed out and nothing happening on long term because it knows it's out of fuel um, it just depends but since you're only seeing long term get to a certain point and then short term balances around zero it is accounting for it it is obviously it has a mass airflow it knows how much air is going into the engine regardless of what engine is on that side it can still count the air and adjust the injectors appropriately and because you use the 2.3 injectors it knows the injector size and latency tables and controls them accordingly whereas if you use 2.5 the latency table is probably different for those as well as injector size and it has no way of knowing that and you're most likely through all the points are going to be running richer than you need to be um, again probably not a big size difference between the 2.3 and 2.5 so it will also adjust the fuel trims for those so you probably could get away with them without throwing fuel trim codes but you could also be running rich at most points and I'd rather just run the ones that the car is made for I may swap them out and see how the 2.5 injectors do whether they really do stay around zero or if they do run too rich to where I consider you know you might could endanger washing out the cylinders um, I didn't go full throttle at any point in time in this thing that I can remember so I didn't match my floor to the ground and without an actual wide band there's no way to know how rich it really is running at wide open throttle um, so if you were running your car hard with a 2.5 injectors and you don't have a wide band you don't know if you're really running too rich or not now they for a turbo car you know they run down around tens but if you're running a naturally aspirated car and you're running below 11s because you don't have the right injector size in them then that could definitely wash your cylinders out because it doesn't need uh, all that extra fuel but uh, as you can see the 2.3 injectors work fine they're programmed already in the computer so unless you plan on getting a tune I would suggest probably just sticking with the 2.3 injectors um, they'll work fine you're not gonna go too lean you're not gonna go too rich um, for cruising and idle they work just fine um, and in wide open throttle, it did have to add about 16% um, or heavy throttle. And a couple points I saw 20%. But other than that, it was good. So um, definitely no issue running the 2.3 injectors. I don't have any data on 2.5 injectors. I haven't used them yet. But uh, you should have no worry about using the 2.3 injectors on a 2.5 motor. Um, so that's all. You know, that's data proof that it works fine. And, you know, the car runs fine. Uh, so if you want to use 2.3 injectors you can or if you want to get a tune you can run a 2.5 injectors and maybe have them tune something to get a little more extra power out of it 
to take advantage of your two five injectors and maybe a premium octane tune as well although if they're tuning for octane i mean you're you're going to be on the edge of it and that's really not how you do it you know you want to tune for the data that you see the car and not have a 97 octane or 93 octane tune you know it's different if you're running e85 you know you can have a e85 tune and a 93 tune but you know you don't want to be trying to get someone to do uh, a 93 octane tune or 89 octane tune or 91 octane tune you want to you know have a good tune for you know the general aspect of the car and what the car shows you um, so if somebody says you know you, oh you know your motors messed up because you know we tuned it for such octane and you ran this octane and it's your fault oh, well that's probably a shitty tune and a shitty tuner so i'd find somebody else but anyways getting off track point of this video is you can use two three injectors on a two five swap no issue later